I finally tried the Axia mod because so many of you were asking me about it, and while I heard about it before it really blew up and everyone started mentioning it to me, I never had a chance to look into it because I've been busy with other videos. I still am busy with other videos, but I decided to take a moment to make this video to give you my initial thoughts and impressions on the mod. I downloaded it and spent about 40 minutes total in it just messing around. The summary of all my thoughts I'll just tell you straight away is I don't think it's a bad mod at all and it has a lot of great uses, so definitely go try it out. It's a great addition to all of the other building tools we have, I don't think it's ever going to be, or ever ought to be, a replacement for other building tools out there. You will always have a variety of tools from a variety of sources for different purposes. And it really just depends on what your personal preference is and what you end up wanting to use in your work. I mean, here I am editing this video in Premiere Pro, but I did my voiceover in Audacity, which is not an Adobe product. It's just a personal preference. I like it better than Adobe Audition. And that's exactly how I am approaching this mod, just another tool. So with that being said, let me get into my initial thoughts on it. The two main features of the mod are the Builder Mode and Editor Mode. The Builder Mode I thought was the more useful of the two. I can see myself using this more than editor mode just because I'm still in game and I can still use my other commands and other tools more easily. That's not to say it isn't easy to switch back and forth in and out of editor mode, but I just don't really see the need for all of those extra tools as much, unless I need to make some fine tuning adjustments. The easily adjustable flight speed, the infinite reach, and the saved hotbars were probably my favorite features of the builder mode. It could be because some of these things I've never really had a good mod or plugin that allowed me to do it and that's why I like it so much. But a lot of the features in Axiom I already have other ways of doing it that I'm used to using. So it's not to say that I need Axiom to replace those because some of the usage of them just feels different. It's hard to explain unless you're in my position and you're just used to a tool. Sometimes it's just better to use what you're used to. That was my feeling with the replace tool. I have other methods of using that that I think are just as effective. Also, I was kind of confused on why you can switch your game mode in here when you can just as easily switch your game mode by holding F3 and toggling with F4. That was another feature that it's already built into the game, so I'm not sure why they added it here, but I guess if you need it, there it is. All of the other features where you can change the state of a block or place a block without changing the state of a neighboring block, those are very useful features. I just don't see myself using them too often because you'd have to be doing a lot of detailed work to make use of them, but it is nice that they are there. After revisiting this a second time, I just noticed this icon on the right where you can erase, extrude, smear, stack, clone, and move by selecting an area and quickly moving it around. I will admit I really like that feature, although making the selection itself does feel a bit wonky. I also like seeing the smear option here because when that was added to Archeon, it was my idea. So I can't help but think that that is where that came from. Like I said, we're not going to talk about every single feature in this builder mode because it's too much to talk about in one video, so for this video, I'm just highlighting the things that stood out to me. I've seen a little bit of the editor mode from other videos, but I purposefully didn't watch too many other reviews or videos about this mod because I wanted this video to be about my first impressions with very little knowledge and experience going into it. I wanted to see how easy it was to figure it out on my own. I do like how this mod walks you through each tool and has a mini tutorial. That was really nice. Overall, the UI is easy to understand. You have the list of different tools on the left and all the tool options that show up when you click on each tool. On the right, I didn't look into all of these as much, but having the history that you can easily go back and forth in was super helpful. I did like that a lot. 
the world properties I didn't see the point of as much since you can set those when you create the world, but having them there is still a neat feature. By the way, I wasn't building anything specific when I was testing all these tools, so you'll see me create just a big mess in this world as I was testing it. I'm just trying to figure out the functionality of everything. Something that I kept forgetting to do or not realizing I need to do is having to press enter anytime I wanted to finish an action or clear a selection. That is something that I'm just not used to. So it was a bit challenging for me trying to just overcome what I'm used to and trying to figure out essentially new software. That's what this feels like. It feels like a whole completely different software to me, which naturally would take time to learn. It did take me a while to get used to the scale of the UI until I finally discovered a way to change that setting. And that was a relief because I was at first worried I wasn't going to be able to. I'm not going to highlight every tool, but I will say some of the better ones that I tried were the ruler. I thought that that was super useful as well as the shatter brush. I really liked that because it's really hard to get a good shatter effect with other tools. I liked how effective that one was and how it has all these adjustments you can make to the pattern. It was certainly much easier to make a shattered edge of a cliff with this. I tried the gradient brush briefly, but I was having a hard time with this one. I was understanding the concept, but I didn't really see the practicality of it. I think I still much prefer using Go Paint when painting on a surface because it's a bit simpler and it does give me more control, but I'm sure there are some uses for this tool. The tool where you can grow crops really quickly was really useful because I don't know if there is a better way to do it. There are other mods where you can do it, but this was just way more intuitive and a lot easier to use. I also liked some of the selecting features where I could select a giant piece of land and just raise it up all of a sudden and make an instant floating island. That was just fun to play around with. I don't really know if I'd actually use it when building. I really liked the fill tool and how it visualizes the area you're going to fill and it's really easy to switch out the block you're using as well. When it came to using all of the sculpting or painting tools, the biggest setback I had with this was that it was very difficult to fly freely around and use the tool at the same time, which is something I'm very used to. I'm so used to flying three-dimensionally around a build as I sculpt or as I paint, and it feels more intuitive to me. Having to click with my mouse to change my view and right-click to use the tool, it wasn't as intuitive or it didn't feel as natural to me from the standpoint of it being in Minecraft. Actually, most of this editor doesn't feel natural to me because it does intentionally, I think, feel more like a 3D software than playing Minecraft. Now, I know that people often use other programs outside of Minecraft to sculpt and make things for Minecraft, and that's not an issue. Honestly, this mod is not an issue at all. It's just my personal preference. I don't see myself using this editor for anything other than terraforming, because honestly, that seems to be the most useful thing about it. It does seem like a very powerful terraforming tool, but as far as what I do with organics, the tools I currently use are more than sufficient for my needs. It just feels too much like a 3D software for my taste, although I was having fun with that zoom feature for about 10 seconds. So to wrap up my quick review, which honestly I'm only doing this because so many people were asking me about it, so here you go. I know it's still being developed and things could change, but so far I do like that it does give very high quality builder tools to those who may not build on servers, to those who may only build on single player. That's very nice and gives more people the opportunity to get into building and more easily too because it is very intuitive and not too difficult to learn unless you're me and you're stuck in your ways, but it doesn't require you to necessarily memorize commands. As far as features it has and tools it offers, there's really not too much that's unique about it. I think what everyone likes about it so much is that it's combining a lot of different tools and abilities into one mod, whereas before you might have to have multiple plugins and mods to get the same things. As I said before, I think it's suited best for terraforming. It seems like it will lend itself the best to that type of work. And then there's my gripes, which I've already mentioned before, but I don't really care for how it feels like 
a 3D software because part of the reason I like building in Minecraft is because it feels so different and I like having the feeling of doing things in game in a very natural way. Flying while using the editor is ridiculously hard for me and just seems more cumbersome than anything else, but that's not to say I won't ever use it. It's just one of those things I'm gonna have to get used to. And then the other thing that I've noticed about it, and I don't know if this is going to change in the future, but the rotating in this only rotates on a 90 degree angle at a time, whereas I am very accustomed to rotating things on really odd angles. And I know that most builders don't have a need for that, but as an organic artist, I do quite often, but that's something minor. It's really not changing too much about what was possible in Minecraft before. All it is is making it more accessible and easier to use for the broader audience. I'm just a bit bothered when I hear people call it a game changer when all of these features were possible before. It's just in a different package. This is just going to make the process a bit easier. It's not really going to change the kind of outcome we're achieving though. This was my very brief Axiom review. I do recommend downloading it and trying it out yourself because it is really fun to play with. Like I said, I only played in it for about 40 minutes and I'll have to try to experiment with some of the other features that I didn't get to try or maybe start using it in a build because that is the best way to learn a new tool is to use it practically. Thank you for listening to me ramble on. This was an unscripted, off-the-cuff video, and I hope you enjoyed it.